Well, as a follow-on to my previous butthole warmer video, um, I did end up with two of these. I ordered them simultaneously from two different suppliers. This one was glued shut, which is nice. It's a nice modification. It also had a strain relief in the form of a knot. And it also had two holes punched through, so that instead of laminating the wires into the material, um, like this one, uh, they were actually soldered on for externally because the holes lined up with the copper strips. Now this material, people were speculating that it might be a graphene based material and to me that graphene would be sort of like just basically almost like taking a pencil and scrubbing it across some paper to actually make it conductive. But uh, in this case, if you look close at the material, it looks like standard Tyvek uh, spun bonded sort of paper material where it's just basically, instead of being a woven material, it's just random um, fibres just all spun onto the surface to create a flat surface. But what's really notable is that within that, when you look through a microscope, are very thin strands, really black, all just crisscrossed. And I get the feeling they may actually be carbon fibre strands actually just spun into the same material. And certainly, even when pulled out to quite a thin layer, the resistance, it, it shows conductivity, and quite good conductivity at that, as you might expect from carbon fibre. So, um, yep, even, you know, just randomly placing placing anywhere on here, I'm getting sort of readings. It, it, when I pulled this apart, it did kind of delaminate it a bit. Um, it, the two sides of the material stuck to both of the um, laminating pouches, so I'm guessing that's probably needed to actually properly squeeze it all together and make a good electrical connection. But anyway, now on to the nitty gritty here, because some of you were asking, could you overload the butthole warmer? Well, here is one of the inserts out the butthole warmer, and it's now being powered at 12 volts. The current it's drawing is half an amp, so it's, it's drawing about 0.6 watts, and I'm going to start turning it up. So, it's 12 volts, now we're going up to 15, and it's drawing an amp, and the plastic is starting to change shape a little bit. It's kind of warping and morphing a little bit. The current is actually going up, and there's a smell. If anything, I'd say the sort of visible strands have kind of almost it's darkened. It seems to have become more... Yeah, it's definitely, it's kind of um, fusing itself together here. So it's currently at 15 volts, 1.6 amps. So let's see what happens if I put it up a wee bit higher. I can see vapours and smoke me off now. Yeah, that's definitely smoke. I think the plastic's actually melting a bit. Technically speaking, I should have planned this a bit more as to what I'm going to do if it bursts into flames. Oh well. 50 volts, 1.5 amps. This probably will burst into flames. There is quite a bit of smoke hazing up now. Uh, we're now up to, with quite a lot of smoke, 18 volts at 1.7 amps and it's starting to go as a bit ripply and bubbly there's quite a bit of smoke coming off it now it just smells like hot plastic really oh and it is bubbling up a bit oh the current's going down which is a bit disappointing so let's put the voltage up then the voltage is now up to 20 volts at 1.5 amps. So let's say I work out the power dissipation. Well, it's 30 watts. Yeah, that's going a bit sort of um, brown now. My contingency plan is probably to grab this if it bursts into flames, rip it off the bench if it comes off the bench, and. Uh, run through to the kitchen with it. I don't think it's glowing. No, it's not glowing, but there's plenty of smoke. So that's uh, now going up to... I'm on the 36 volt range, so let's go up to... Uh, 
Yeah, now I'm up to 24 volts. So definitely I don't think you'd want this up your butt when it was at 24 volts because that's 1.7 amps and uh, 24 volts times 1.7, this is probably setting far to my bench, oop, 24 times, oop, 24 times 1.7 equals, yeah that's 40 watts, that's going to be burning my bench isn't it, oh it's actually starting to look a very bit black in the middle, oh and uh, the, oh, Right, okay, that's kind of ruined it. Right, so um, definitely, yeah, I wouldn't exceed standard USB voltages if you're going to stick this up your rectum in any way. Oh, it's not really burnt the bench, but it's gone very black. Oh, I wish I hadn't pulled those wires off now. That's kind of ruined it, hasn't it? But I think they'd actually desoldered. They have actually desoldered. So yes, it, although having said that, I'm sure this is going to still have a modest resistance. Now, it had a resistance before to pass about, um, let's see, it was about 500 milliamps at 5 volts. So R equals V5 divided by um, 0.5. So it had about 10-ish ohms. I think it was a bit higher than that, actually. So let's see if uh, I can even make a connection onto this now. The resistance is now... Oh, it's gone way up. It's about 150 ohms now. But um, it didn't burst into flames, which is uh, commendable. Although looking at that now, um, looking at it through paper, it's gone very... Uh, you're not really going to see this, I don't think. It's gone very... Sort of, there's bits that have burnt and it's gone... Well, yeah, it really has burnt. And it's gone very sort of holish in the middle. So I think it would kind of... Unless it was really majorly overloaded, I don't know if it would burst into flames as such. But um, it might just destruct in a controlled manner. Then again, maybe I should have stuck 240 across it. Oh, and it has seriously delaminated. It's bubbled up. Oh, well, that was interesting. 